Welcome, I'm Andrew and this is From the Ground Up where we'll be meeting Australia's entrepreneurs, finding out what makes them tick and celebrating their successes of those that really form the foundation of Australia's economy. Today, I'm delighted to be meeting Anton Asset, the founder of Great Day. Whether you're a shoe cobbler, furniture salesman, or whatever. Any walk of life, be the best. Yeah, be the best at it and take pride in it. Anton, thanks for joining me. Tell me, growing up, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? We really grew up in a way that I guess we were, everything was put in front of us, what my dad did every day. So whether it was, you know, a restaurant or retirement homes in the States or a business in Iraq or whatever it was, that was what he talked about. Yeah. So I guess without really kind of thinking much about it, it was always something that we was in front of us. And I guess at the end of the day, I didn't think I was going to go and get a job for some, with someone. I worked for a few people over the years, but really I think I always thought I was going to do something that wasn't yeah. being employed by someone else. Yeah. I always thought, I think I'm going to end up importing things and selling them. Yeah. So I guess that's what I ended up doing. And since so in the DNA, yeah, right? I think so. I think without knowing it, I'd kind of fallen in love with Danish design. It had kind of been around me as a kid and then I kind of fell in love with it again. And then I was like, what is this? Why isn't anyone selling it? Why isn't it here in Australia? There was a few little shops doing it. And then I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. So I spent the next 12 months with a fax machine yeah. and a dial-up modem. You know, I think this was almost 20, 21 years ago and found some guys in Denmark that were selling secondhand Danish furniture. But I love the idea of business. I love the idea of taking risks. Yeah. As much as people would say that I'm a risk taker, I'm also quite conservative, but I believe that if you're going to do something, you've got to give it a go properly, absolutely. 100%. And see what so happens. look, we're sitting here in this absolutely incredible showroom. How do you get from a dial-up modem <laughs> uh, and a fax machine 20 yeah. years ago to two or three of these across Australia? We were really, like when I first started, it was a very kind of, it was a passion thing. I loved it. The moment I saw it, I fell in love with the furniture and there was, you know, I'm one of those people I don't think that I could sell something I'm not passionate about. I think some people are great at that, but I need to be passionate about it. The first warehouse I had was a warehouse in Paran. I used to pay my rent money to an ex-footballer in beer money every week, every <laughs> Friday at the pub, literally. Yeah, yeah. I had about 100 buckets in the warehouse because it leaked so much. And I started restoring the furniture myself, then I got people to help me. The first night I opened up, 100 people showed up and I sold like $30,000. I was like, okay, there's something to this. Absolutely. So then three days later, I actually took my first trip to Denmark and then it kind of went from there. And what we really were doing were, we were I was buying secondhand or what they call architect furniture from Denmark. Mm. And then we ended up having something like 10 or 15 guys in a workshop in Melbourne restoring it all. And we built quite a reputation for doing it in a way that no one else had been doing it. We stripped the pieces back to their bare bones and almost rebuilt them. Mm. So I think that was kind of part of the brand journey where like, if we're gonna do it, do it properly or don't bother. And then we realized pretty quickly that some of these old factories that used to make this product actually are still around. So we started conversations with them, some of which if you sent them an email, they just wouldn't reply or a fax. But over a long period of time and a lot of work, we realized that the Danes in particular are about relationships. A lot of back and forth over the years. And then we realised, you know, well, you used to make this bit of furniture, this chair or this sofa or this sideboard. Would you consider making it again? Right. And they were like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'll buy 20 units. And they're like, okay. So I guess in a way we feel quite, you know, proud of the fact that we've helped reinvigorate what, it's, what were some of the dying factories in, in Scandinavia you know, 15 wonderful. years ago. Yeah. But now it's all new and has been for 10 years. And now it's all a mix of what we call contemporary Danish or Scandinavian design and classic design, but nothing vintage anymore. Interesting. Yeah. Um, were there like two or three key points in that journey, you know, for some of our listeners as they're thinking about scaling and growing that were like really important decisions you needed to get right? took me a good five or 10 years to realize if I wanted to grow it, I couldn't do everything. Mm. And how can I be working on the business rather than in it, you know, which you eventually grind, you know, you can't do it all. 
So that was, I think in the first five years, I kind of realized that and I was like, I need to change the way I work. Mm. I think also the big thing for us was the change from vintage to new. Because vintage meant you had to do, you had to find like a thousand pieces of furniture every three or four months. Whereas new, I was like, I don't need to do that anymore. I have a consistent supply. I know my costs. There's no restoration costs. So that was a really big change, right. you know, for the business. That really changed our ability to grow because if we couldn't find something, you what did we do? You can't yeah. scale. You, yeah, you couldn't scale. So the shift to new was definitely a big kind of decision, but it was a risk. I remember holding my breath going, what's going to happen? Are people going to stop buying? Are they just not going to come in? You know, but it was the right decision. So that, that was definitely a really pivotal moment in the business. Mm. I think the other thing was, you know, when we actually started to advertise after we did that and realizing that well, PR and advertising were important, mm. I, admire the brand. It was very important for us to make a statement in, in, the, in the market and go, this is who we are. So I think that was also another really important right. catalyst. Maybe a final question from me for you, Anton, is when I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs, as they're scaling and growing, they're always really concerned that you keep the essence, the culture, mm. the intimacy of the business. How yeah. have you thought about that? Um, I think it's something that we've sort of done from day one. Mm. Sorry. It's something that we've, I think, owned. So if you ask anyone who knows the business, I think they would say the business is what it was and was what it is. And I think that's why we've been able to keep it, because we haven't deviated. Mm. I think it's a really hard thing to do, but I think if you can do it, I think it's something that can really make a business sing. Mm. And I think we're very lucky. Yeah. Well, it you can feel it. This is an exceptional Thanks. business that yeah. you've, you've built. Uh, mm. It's our privilege to be your partner. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for sharing your perspectives with us no, today. We really, I really appreciate the bank. They have been really helpful. It's, it's always nice to be able to share a story that I think hopefully other people who want to start a business can relate to. And I think yeah. if you want to give it a go, give it a go. That's right. You know, just try. You know, all you can do is fail and that's then it. hopefully, you know, you just you just got to keep trying. That's wonderful. And I think that's just what anyone should do. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for wonderful. your time. I really appreciate it.